Hi, this is Ben Lindbergh. And Jessica Clemens. And we are the hosts of Button Mash, the Ringer's video game podcast on the Ringerverse feed. We are in the midst of the biggest blockbuster gaming month either of us can recall. We're talking about Spider-Man 2, Super Mario Bros., Alan Wake, Five Nights at Freddy's, Assassin's Creed Mirage. Woo! We will have our hands full. You can have your ears full with us talking about these wonderful video games on the Ringerverse feed weekly throughout this month on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Lindman. I am joined once again this week by my colleague, my friend, I think, Jody Walker. Hi, Jody. <laughs> Juliette, that was a very like cat esque pause, <laughs> a, a pregnant pause between my friend, I think. I think. Yes, I think, friends. You guys can't see this, but Jody and I today are both wearing sweaters from J. Crew Factory. I just wanted to share that. Just see, so, just so you're gonna have visual. What's a better signifier of friendship than shopping at the same <laughs> outlets? Do you use jcrewfactory.com? Because that's what I, I do both. Like I order jcrew and jcrewfactory.com. I don't. I think like for a really long time, I thought you couldn't even access outlets online. And like I was saying before we got on, I have one of the great benefits of where I live. It's a great access to an outlet mall. Outlets have changed over time, but we're we're here today to not talk about outlets, <laughs> though I would love to. We are here today to talk about Golden Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise Week 3, both quite entertaining. We're going to start with Golden Bachelor, obviously. We're going to lean into joy, which this show is providing in spades. We're going to talk about it all, but I have to begin with Ellen and her one-on-one date. Ellen, I, we learned, is divorced. I don't know if her previous husband is still alive or not. Who, who knows? But the most important thing that happened on this week's episode is Gary asks how she met her husband. And Jody, do you know what she said? That they met when they were 10 in the Catskills. They met at camp. At, at camp, camp. In the Catskills. And does that mean anything? It means that she's a camp person and she married someone she met from camp, which is the dream if you are a camp person. <laughs> one of my camp friends, Allison, texted me after week one and like just had an affinity for Ellen. And I, I like, I now know why. It's because she too is a camp person and Allison immediately identified it. Also, Allison, credit to her, was like, I just think Ellen is Jewish. And she, and based on that. Well, that's what I was wondering when I said, does that mean anything? Like a camp in the Catskills, I feel like she's probably Jewish. Yeah, but the, which is great. And, you know, I'm also happy to have Jewish pride this week. But yeah. I just am so happy to have a camp person on Golden Bachelor who was married to I her mean, camp boyfriend. No, I got to say, Juliet, after that talent show, I think we got a lot of camp people on Golden Bachelor. That was <laughs> a lot of camp ener- camper and camp counselor energy, which I also share. So nothing but a compliment. I, in general, I think I have fun aunt and camp counselor energy. So I always like it when I see it. I don't think I I don't think I have either of those energies, but I like to be both. I think that you I, have I camp am. passion energy. <laughs> Yeah, and I also, I liked being a counselor, but I don't know. Anyway, just had to shout that out because I was so excited about it and felt really meaningful to me. So thank you, Ellen, for being a camp person and marrying your camp boyfriend. 
Would love to know what the relationship is like now, but... That's so... I mean, I obviously... I didn't make the camp connection I should have because I knew that I was talking to you later. (laughs) But the thing that I was focused on is that, like, did they completely avoid saying the word divorce? They did, yeah. He said, I know that you're no longer married, but how did you meet your husband? And then they, like, talked about being married, but never talked about getting divorced. I just, it's so, it's very interesting to watch the way, like, we approach on this show. And I'm sure it's editing. Like, I'm sure that they talked about her getting divorced and why it happened and what a relationship with her ex is now. But it's like... It's, you know, it's like the New York Post is writing this. Like, if you're a widow, you're an angel. <laughs> and if you're and if you're a d- divorcee, don't talk about it. It's your deepest There's something secret. wrong with you. It's a great point. I wish they weren't treating divorce like a dirty word because it is not. Also, like, the whole point of the, sh- of the show, I think, is, like, second chance at love or, like, finding love again. And there shouldn't be, like, any stipulation on how you get to that point. So it's pretty weird. It's also, like, kind of, like, classic Bachelor to, like, take divorce and turn it into like the worst thing that could ever happen to the you and I just thing in the world when it's like extremely normal yeah and like very common and I think sometimes I, I don't know it seems like Ariana Grande's divorce is going just fine for her like it's not always bad so <laughs> classic Ellen and Ariana Grande comparison if this is the time that we have to talk about Ellen I do just want to say I love her the love continues to grow incredible date and Gary clearly loves her. Like, to me, this feels like JoJo and Jordan. Like, it's written in the stars from the beginning. I you actually don't, think don't so? I don't agree. I don't think you're wrong. Like, I'm not saying he's not going to pick her. And, I, you know, we both thought that she might win. But I actually just, like, don't see their chemistry. But I also wonder if chemistry looks different after 70. Like, maybe, like, they're, like the commonality and the companionship is, like, sufficient in a, or, or like is meaningful in a way that's different than like when you watch other dating shows that doesn't translate on the same the same way on camera at least not on this show but I actually like don't see their chemistry in the same way I think you kind of saw it with Joan that's true I think it's a different kind of chemistry also though I think like everything happening on the golden bachelor might as well be the most romantic thing in the world <laughs> when you compare it to the chemistry that is happening on bachelor in paradise which is like painful to watch these people who have been shooting fire emojis at each other on Instagram for months. And then they meet in real life and they're like, this is great. Isn't this great? This is like, I like no one there. I feel like has any chemistry. So when I see Ellen and Gary in a hot air balloon, I'm like, they're about to fuck. It's just have like, you ever been like- <laughs> kissed at, well, I forgot the height is, but he's like, have you ever been kissed at X number of yards? And she can barely say no, but I'd like to be like, I'd like to, before he kisses her. Like she's you're telling it. me that's not romance, Juliet? <laughs> he says, he, he says at the beginning of the date, she is the person I feel I can be most myself around. I want to see how our romantic chemistry is. And I felt like by the end, he was feeling good. She said her knees buckled when he kissed her. <laughs> Which, that could just you know, be arthritis. Could be a combination of age and being <laughs> however many feet in the air. But I think it was also romance. She seems just great. What do you? What was her talent show skill? It was like just, she gave a sex ed talk. Yeah, I know, but that's not like a skill. And she she was saying, do you think she says in her sex ed classes, "Hoo ha" means vagina? I do. I think that was a direct <laughs> quote from her seventh grade sex ed talk, which you know, I I've also <laughs> I keep saying all these like on our Golden Bachelor recaps, like all these stereotypes that I've heard about like retirement homes, and one is that there's just like rampant sexual activity and that they have like forgotten safe sex practices. So they have to have sex ed talks. So to me, this felt very applicable. It's, it's a great point. Someone did DM me last week being like, very often people get married at uh, retirement communities because there is so much sex that the, yeah. the, the people's kids, like the, you know, their adult children are like, you should get married because they're so scandalized by the sex, which I think is funny. <laughs> yeah, things, I mean, things just move different when you're at that it. age and at that point in your life. And I'm finding it fascinating. I agree. Amanda and I talked about this on Jam Session. Like, if you're not going to have kids together and you're not, and you're at a different phase of life, like what, I'm sort of like, why get married? But moreover, I'm like, why wait on anything? Like, just go for it. Like the sort of the the repercussions in some ways are more like emotional than anything else. Whereas I feel like with marriage at a younger age, the like financial and governmental entanglement is like much harder to undo. So 
Yeah. It's like, if you're getting married at 75, you're probably going to stay married. So yeah, combine those incomes, combine those social securities, like get, you know, get each other's, well, I guess health insurance. I don't know. It's, it (laughs) seems to make more sense to me, less risk. Anything else from the Ellen one-on-one? Oh, how did I not talk about Michael Costello? I'm so sorry. You must be a Project <laughs> Runway person, jo- Jody. Yeah, of course. I st- I've been watching it for like 20 years. I remember my, when Michael Costello came into my television world. I mean, I think it was like 20 years ago. Like, is Michael Costello famous for being a Project Runway still or just like famous for like being in the mix? I mean, he's in the mix. I almost got a Michael Costello dress on Revolve the other day. Like, really? you know, yeah, like he's just out here actually designing. And I really liked those dresses that Ellen tried on. And I did want to say hi, Barbie, in her final choice. <laughs> if she got the pretty woman date. We should say that, right? That's, yes. that's like what it's called in, in yeah, bachelor parlance, which usually means that the that the bachelor really likes her and wants to spoil her. Michael Costello was on the eighth season of Project Runway in 2010. Oh, wow. I thought it was 13 way, years it was ago. Like season three. I thought 13 it was years. I, I thought it was time. like season three as well, but that just shows you how many seasons they pumped out at the beginning. Yes, she got the pretty woman date, which is definitely indicative. I liked how they did this one. I liked how Michael Costello brought the clothes to the mansion instead of her yeah. going somewhere. And then I liked how she showed what she was wearing to the other women. It just felt like a little bit less gross than like the typical pretty woman date and more like, we're going to spoil you and here's someone who can bring a ton of clothes. I also wondered if they took everyone's measurements like the beginning of the season. Because like, how did the clothes fit so perfectly? Like, did they plan that out? Would they have a bunch of different sizes? Like, is Ellen sample size? I I have no idea. I doubt it because almost no one is sample size. So right. I have questions about that. But I, I liked the way they did this. And I, I also just in general like how they're embracing the mansion as like HQ for this yeah. season and, and seeing more of the kitchen and seeing more of the rooms. Like a lot of the production choices that they're making really work for me and are like so refreshing, even though it's such a familiar location because it's on every season. Have you ever seen a piece of physical comedy on The Bachelor like the final blooper scene in this episode where Kathy is teasing Susan about farting and they're trying to decide if it was the meatballs Meatballs or the guacamole? guacamole. And Nancy's ass busts in through like a shutter. Like a barn door or something. Yeah, Yeah, like... It's like opens a way. I mean, it was like out of three's company. It was out of Golden Girls. I was like, make this the show. I love watching them inside the house. They're so funny. That's three fourths of Askin. We've got A is Astrid. She wasn't there, but S for Susan, K for Ka- Kathy, and N for Nancy. Their click is Askin. And as Kathy told us, they're telling. I don't We're know telling. what that means, but they're telling. You're asking, they're telling. I think we know what it means by the end of the episode. She was telling. She she had some they had some things to say. More on that in a minute. But uh, did you like the dress that Ellen ended up choosing of all of her options? The pink dress. She ended yeah. up in the pink dress. Yeah, I looked great on her. She I she mean, looked great. It was a lot. I liked him. I just I thought she looked great in all of them. It's, I meant to Google it. Like that that feels like an exact look out of Pretty Woman. Like with the diamond. She was wearing a very diamond. It's an exact look from something that like that bright pink dress and that diamond mm. necklace. Maybe it's not Pretty Woman. Can't it's not Pretty Woman, it. but I, I think it's just like a very classic red carpet type of look. Like she could have gone to the Oscars and fit right in. And she should. Yeah, I would like which to is a great her to the Oscars. It's a great thing for her to do. I love her. I just love her. She's my favorite. Ellen seems the most real. I think that's one of the reasons why perhaps she's jumping out to us and she also is jumping out to Gary. He clearly likes the women who he can see actually spending time with, like not just within the confines of TV. And I think that she, like the talent she chose to give, her her camp counselor energy, her, she, there's just something about her that feels like you can picture it in another terrain. You, she's from, I think, Delray, Florida. Like, you can definitely imagine her at the retirement community in Florida and, like, just sort of, like, running the show. And I feel like that's got to oh, be yeah. appealing. Yeah, I think she's probably someone who's comfortable being herself all the time, and that mm-hmm. always helps in a situation like this. So I think she's just kind of jumped off the screen. She's also not the kind of person who... She obviously is a little more like natural, a little more laid back, but she doesn't 
seem to have to like explain that like we saw Faith yeah. do last week in a way that sort of threw everyone else under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> she just is that way. Ellen has not made any comments about her own appearance outside of like, even, I mean, she's in a date. She's on, on a date that's very appearance focused. But even with that, she wasn't really that dialed into like how she looks. It was more about the experience of being pampered than like what she's actually wearing. And it was much more focused on how she felt, which is kind of interesting. I don't think that's common for the pretty woman date. And she's it is star. also endearing. She's a star. She is. <laughs> Ellen. <laughs> she is. Let's talk more about the talent show. We got to talk about Leslie's dance. I mean, is Leslie lying about her age? Like, did she just want to get on TV? Is she the first person in the history of the Bachelor Nation to make themselves seem older that, to get on this television show? <laughs> I don't know. She really takes on different airs. Like there was, it's, there was some point when I saw her when she was just in the house and she had kind of like a bandana wrap around her head, and I almost couldn't recognize her. Like she has a bunch of very different looks, and I feel like she's kind of said that. You know, she seems to sort of define herself self in these different ways. Like, yes, I'm a sexy dancer, but I'm also a flower child, and I also put this bandana around my head sometimes. And also, I'm a baker. Let me tell you what I didn't like about that dance. <laughs> when at the end, she revealed like g- floor cookies that had been hiding <laughs> under a stool and then fed them to Gary. I was like, I don't want to eat floor food that's been under under a hollow stool. No, thanks. I don't understand why she had to be like, and I bake. Like, who cares? She really wants to be seen as multifaceted. I think she I guess really it, regretted leaning into like the sexy dancer. dance, but that is fine because like she is a dancer. That's her talent. Do you think that they have the jumpsuit, the unitard that she was wearing available at the J. Crew factory outlet? Because I <laughs> would like it. So good. I loved it. It looked her really back comfortable looked too. Amazing. I was wondering about like boob support. Must be a built in bra in that item, but like. She looked comfortable and supported. I, 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 I don't know. I need to know more. It is a great unitard. She looked phenomenal, and it was a great routine. I, I enjoyed it. It was a mix of sort of like cheerleader, but also like dance workout class. I, I liked it. She's, she may be our Jane Fonda. She may be our Jane Fonda. I don't think she's <laughs> lying about her age. I think she's just she's just sixty four and killing it. She looks. Great. I mean, that's she, young. Like sixty four is young. I like, you know, the 64 year olds I know, I I feel like they could bust, I feel like they could bust that out with enough choreography background. Yeah. I mean, she's great. I'm not trying to like pick on her to be like, she's lying about her. I'm not trying to like, I feel like it's like a value judgment. Like you can't be 64, but I just just need it to be true because I need to imagine that I will become as sexy as Leslie when I am 64. (laughs) Like maybe it's ahead of me. Maybe I'll just like get hotter. She's so youthful. Who else from the talent show really stood out to you? Let's talk about Sandra being the Lucille Ball of our time. Ab- abs- that I actually laughed out loud when she hit the punchline. When I she love hits her. The, so which woman did he choose? The one with the biggest boobs. <laughs> Sandra, <laughs> you maniac. I love you. And it's so, I like, I'm so interested to see what happens with her because I do feel like, we keep getting these little moments that really make her stand out, but we've barely seen her with Gary. I felt like we saw her in the preview a lot. I just, I, yeah, I don't think I we've seen her, her with Gary far, at all, but we haven't seen much yet. Yeah, we, we haven't seen her at all, but it, that was so funny and a great way to start it. Who knows if she actually started the, the talent show, but like good editing by putting that first. It set a really good tone. Astrid's talent was being a beatnik, which I assume like included slam poetry, but I wasn't exactly sure. Do you mean April? Sorry. Yes, April. I keep saying Astrid, but I mean April. I couldn't make heads or tails of what uh, what was her talent? She was being a beatnik. She like put on some fringe clothes and said, I'm a beatnik, which is not beatnik. Susan did some kind of martial arts, which I loved. I love Susan. Susan has a lot of skills. She could have done anything on that stage. Did you see Susan and Kathy's Instagram post that Kathy put up where she referred to them as... Chris and Caitlyn, Chris Jenner and Caitlyn Jenner. And she, I did not. It's so funny. And so but I guess is, like people, people have been saying that. is undeniable. And they're leaning into it. And I absolutely Great. love it. Like I'm, I'm mixed on Kathy. Obviously we'll come back to her and Teresa's uh, tension. But like 
that off that that off show moment has me all in on Susan and Kathy. I think that like the, yeah. they're self effacing, they're having fun, and they also really found friendship, which is so sweet. And always one of the best parts of like these dating shows is when people like find friend love. And uh, Susan is like clearly not winning, but I'm so happy she's on the show. She brings so much energy. She's constantly smiling, and she's like everyone's confidant. Like I, I just am happy when she's on TV. And everyone's hair looks great. There was yeah, like, thanks, Kathy, Susan. Kathy's hair looks markedly better than it did when she arrived, and I yes. noticed it. I, she had it kind of the side of it pinned back, and I thought it looked so like useful and pretty chic. and cute and chic. And then later, when I saw Kathy doing, I mean, when I saw Susan doing her hair, I was like, oh, well, Susan did it. Like, yeah, that what explains a, what it. A get to have a to have a hairdresser, a stylist in in the house. It's also it's fun watching the those two and a few of the others, like it's so rare to weirdly to see truly funny people on this show. I think like not funny on accident and not doing funny stuff, but like witty and they are witty. Yeah. They're, they're like a quick bunch. Yeah. And then of course the winner of the talent show was Joan. I thought Joan's poem was like very cute. I enjoyed it. (laughs) It was, it was like when she ends it with the, I hope you'll give me an extra point. And then she gives it like, a. this was my first cry of the episode. Uh, <laughs> she gives it like a poignant pause for just not vomiting on your shoes. I was like, <laughs> Shell Silverstein. This, it was giving Shell Silverstein. I thought like, yeah, because when she was like, she did a poem, I was like, oh, okay. You know, it's going to be a, it was really quite good for like the kind of poem that rhymes, you know? Yeah. It was really good. Compared to regular Bachelor when they do these kinds of like, everyone bring a talent. Like this was so much more fun. Also just by virtue of calling it a talent show, not like pretending it was anything else other than like get on stage and do something wacky or do something entertaining. Like was just great. The sort of the, the low end aspect of it like played really well. Whereas when they try to like make it seem like a bigger deal or something that it's not or like a poetry slam, like it's just stupid. Like the... The ideas that are going into this season of Golden Bachelor, like, definitely need to be applied to everything else because it's much more fun. Like, just call it what it is. It's a talent show. But I do feel like they've done talent shows on, like, just kind of called it a talent show where maybe they're also, like, dressed up or wearing a Speedo or something. But, like... There's always going to be, like, a theme on regular Bachelor. Yeah, I just also feel like these women were better at doing the talent show. You know, like they were just so more like, talented. sure of themselves, more talented in their own skin. And, you know, I mean, Joan was like clearly really terrified. And I thought she was going to get up there and do fine, but be like give a nervous sort of performance. And she just was so delightful. Yeah. And so <laughs> beautiful. I know. I like Joan. So Joan goes home because her daughter recently had a baby and needs support. And Gary seemed like legitimately heartbroken, as did she. I feel like if for any reason doesn't work out with the woman he has chosen through this process, he's got to call Joan. I felt like they had something legit. And what like a what a great loophole that like if it doesn't work out, you have someone that you had a connection with that you could just call up and be like, how you doing? You want to restart this? Where does do we know? I don't know where she lives. I believe she's from Alexandria, Virginia. Okay. Well, if I recall you know. Correctly. So, you, you know, not the most convenient to Indiana, but who knows? They seemed like they had a really nice time and he was really loving it. I, I felt bad when she had to leave. Everyone was so sad for her. I That's another thing. All the women, it was like, it's like on Survivor when someone has to go home and they're like so yeah. upset for like a medical they're evacuation. so bonded. On it's Survivor, insane. they're always telling each other, I love you, like hard three word, I love you on yeah. like, the second day. I'm like, okay, reel it in. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Like you just let's, res- let's reserve that word to have some meaning. <laughs> I know. That's how they felt on this when Joan had to go home. It was truly, oh gosh, really. They were so, that was my next, that was my next cry of the episode is Susan was so upset and <gasps> Gary was so upset. I mean, he really was like, he was shaken up and he was struggling so much much between wanting to tell her that he understood, but also being really disappointed. And he said, I, what did he say? He was like, I'm disappointed, but I'll be with you. I'll be with yeah. you. Like, it I'll was be cute. like, I'll be in your heart. Uh, yeah. It was, it was adorable. Also, I was kind of curious about the logistics of how she got the message. I, they must have messaged production or something like that, but I was just sort of curious. Yeah. I guess they have some sort of access. Yeah. They must, you know, like emergency numbers or whatever. It is kind of surprising to me she went on the show. I I guess, like, I just, 
I don't know. She seems so pained. I, I thought it was interesting. She must have, it seems like Joan's grieving and mourning over her husband has just been, like, really hard for her. I mean, understandably so, but it seems very raw. She says that explicitly, but I think it also explains, like, why going on the show was so meaningful and then why leaving was also so meaningful. Also, they've been putting this show together for so long. You know, yeah. like, they were calling for applications, like, three ago. years ago. Yeah. I wonder how long all of, like, she may have been cast on this before her daughter was even pregnant. You know, like, I, I just wonder how long they've all known that they were going on and been kind of building up to it. And like she said, you know, she just hoped that it would get better, but it's gotten worse. It was very emotional hearing her yeah. talk about how like you're always a mother. But then also the last thing she said, she was like, this is just this and Gary have just really healed something in me. You know, like as you get older, you just become more invisible and you don't have this sort of like significance you had when you were young. And she said this really healed that for her. I know. It was really sweet. I, again, like my main takeaway from Golden Bachelors, I'm just so happy that women of this age are on television and like being celebrated yeah. and like they're embracing each other, except for Teresa and Kathy. <laughs> So Kathy asks a really important question, and she asks it completely earnestly. And she's basically like, is Teresa dumb as rocks, or does she know exactly what she's doing? And that is basically not a paraphrase. That's almost verbatim of what she says. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she says it much more harshly. <laughs> so Jody, is Teresa dumb as rocks, or does she know what she's doing? If I have to answer one... If those are my options, my multiple choice Kathy options, I think the answer is dumb as rocks. <laughs> but what I would say is that she is just, she's just clueless. She's just sort of ignorant to what she's doing because she is maybe sort of self-absorbed, but I, I do not see it as being malicious. No. I don't I don't think she's dumb as rocks either because she doesn't <laughs> sound dumb. She just sounds clueless in a way that must be pretty self-absorbed. <laughs> Cuz when she goes through all that and then she does it again at the rose ceremony I like know. immediately starts talking about her connection with Gary. I was like, "Teresa." Well, she can Teresa, only talk no. about how great Gary is as a reflection of how he treats her and her own experience. So I just think she's, like, incredibly self-absorbed. And, like, the only way she can discuss anything is through her own experience. So I would say, like, yeah, I I'm now introducing another option. I so Sorry I didn't give it to you. But my response is she's self-absorbed. Kathy was pretty mean. Like, she was the type of mean where you're like, I'm not being mean, I'm just being honest. But, like, the being honest is mean. I can't say I disliked it. I was like, I needed a little bit of edge, and now I'm in on Kathy. Like, I just, I really <laughs> enjoyed I her commentary. I was already in on Kathy, so I felt like I would excuse almost anything. But I felt the same, which is like, this is harsh. And also, Teresa wasn't defensive about it. You know, like, when Kathy told her, she said she really felt bad. She wasn't ever like, you know, she just kind of took it. Which then made it seem probably more harsh what Kathy was saying. <laughs> like Teresa was so when they so I did also like that Kathy ultimately she didn't throw Teresa under the bus. Like, yeah, she does tell Gary that she's having a hard time. I thought, unless we missed some things, I thought she was going pretty hard on the like, some people have just been really mean to me today. I, I don't know. I don't know if I would classify what Teresa was doing as like mean. Mean feels like it has intention, but I guess like what Kathy was really feeling is that Teresa was making a judgment call that like she can talk to Kathy about how amazing and special and perfect and unbeatable her connection is with Gary because she doesn't see Kathy as competition, which I think would sort of speak to what Joan was saying, which is like, you're already feeling an amount of insignificance maybe at this point mm -hmm. in your life as a woman, when society has deemed you like no longer of value, not a lot of value. Yeah. And then when you have like a peer sort of reflecting that back at you again, that would, that would be painful. I just definitely don't think 
Teresa was doing it with any intention. <laughs> no, she definitely wasn't. Also, I don't think she really did anything except for like make Kathy feel like she doesn't have the connection that Teresa does. Well, there was that moment in the kitchen where she, she starts the conversation being like, you know, I want everyone to have a good time here, but <laughs> our date was undeniable. And Kathy's kind of like, what, what's that now? What are you telling me? I love the kitchen scenes, like just in general. I love seeing them taking care of themselves. I love seeing them like congregate there. I've also been in that kitchen. It's huge. That island is really big and it is like a great kitchen to cook in for a group. And so, and it is like a real like communal space. I understand why they're there a lot. Yeah, she she's just like, she can't hold it in. I feel like she also maybe, uh, similar to Kathy and Joan, like hasn't felt this way in a long time. So she's so excited. Mm-hmm. She like can't, hold it back. My favorite thing that Kathy said that was totally mean was when she was making fun of how small Teresa's clothes are. I loved it. I thought it was so funny. I mean, that I was thinking of you the whole episode because like (laughs) you absolutely called it on Teresa. Like last week you were like, Gary clearly really likes her, but I don't know if the other women are clicking with her. And I was like, why do you even, how can you even tell like what's going on? And then boom, big time. Like Kathy was making fun of her from the jump. And she frames it as like, you know what I'm jealous of? These tiny ass clothes, but she's not jealous. She just wants to talk about how tiny these clothes are. That is totally something that I would say. So that's why I loved it. It's also something that is not said from a place of like anything but like jealousy and envy and like some kind of negative feeling. Like it's not a kind thing to say. I'm also very judgmental of peers' clothing choices as a like extension of my own insecurity over how I would like to be dressing. So I Maybe really related to it. I subconsciously wore this J. Crew factory sweater <laughs> like specifically for you. I do like to dress to theme. Well, I, you know, I like you and I feel comfortable that we are united in our J. Crew factory <laughs> theme today. But all to say, I thought it was really funny. I loved it. I thought it was so real and I related to it. And it, and I also, didn't I say that I didn't like how Teresa dressed? I thought she dressed too young. You very specifically <laughs> commented on her tiny clothes. Yeah, like her short shorts. Like her very small shorts. And it's like, it's so funny because like the way Kathy said it, the way you said it, like it's not slut shaming. It's like, it's like, I can't believe the size of these because she yeah. is so small and then the clothes are so small that I have to feel that like my fingers could span the length of those shorts. Do you happen, are you watching Love is Blind season five? I've watched the earlier episodes and okay. I've listened to you. And then I, I just started listening to you and Callie talk about it instead of keeping on watching. Oh, right. I appreciate it. Stacy, who we hate, dresses similar. Like, she's like similar to Teresa with like the tiny clothes club. Ter- Stacy doesn't wear a full shirt ever in the course of the show. But like, it's similar type of shorts. In episode, there's like this big party episode that they have. It's in episodes five and six or four and five. I can't remember. And Stacy's wearing like those types of cutoff shorts where you can see the pockets because they're so short. Mm. And I just feel like it's very, it's very uh, Teresa. She would, I think she you know, did like wear those. <laughs> I got to say this summer, I was, I was wearing tiny clothes. Like I was just like, at some point I was like, what's going on? Like I was just really into short dresses this summer. Just like getting the gams to the people, I guess. Amanda Dobbins tells me that minis are back. So minis are so back. And like, it has been really fun. Like it makes me feel like a kid again. Okay. I think dressing on trend for you is different than Teresa and her tiny clothes. So I'm just throwing that out there. (laughs) Maybe, maybe. I loved that Kathy brought it up. Thank you so much, Kathy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, can you just imagine getting a constant running commentary from Kathy? Because like the little things that we hear her say, they are they are on point. I, I couldn't believe it in their sort of confrontation. When I loved Teresa it. is like, Teresa's like, I was, you know, she's can't believe that Kathy is upset about this. She had no idea. And then she's like, I was just trying to be open and honest. And Kathy pauses and she says, nope, I'm not buying it. I was like, oh my God. (laughs) If someone ever said that, I would get mad. If someone said that to me, no, I'm not buying what you're saying. I would get mad. And I was, I was sort of, I was surprised by Teresa's there, there was not an angry bone in her body, which was interesting. No. Teresa seems like a, a pretty nice person. Like, again, just yeah. like misguided. But I, I think that I would have been pushed over the edge if I were Kathy by Teresa's rose ceremony performance. Unbelievable. But then, on the other hand, 
Teresa, I mean, Kathy is being pretty mean. So it's a, it's a lose-lose creating great television and bringing us the actual, some tension that we needed because throughout three episodes, it's sort of the only real conflict, which I'm enjoying. And it doesn't seem, you know, I think that people have been worried, like, we really love Gary. We really love these women. This is such a different show because, like, it is really sweet. It feels less contrived. It somehow, the romance, like, the option of getting together at the end, it all feels, like, more realistic than original brand yeah. Bachelor. And so I think people have been kind of scared of what kind of drama, like, the producers might try to stir up, like, if they would cut the brakes and the headlights on Gary's car so that he has to drive on a freeway. <laughs> in the dark, for example. Um, but this didn't seem contrived, you know? It was just like a personal conflict and it was really complex. Like at the end of the rose ceremony when I saw Teresa and Kathy hugging, like they were holding each other at the end and I was like, oh, great. Yeah. And then they immediately got into another <laughs> argument. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's a simple show. Simple reality shows are always a revelation and they go awry when you just try to like put a hat on a hat and it's like just keep it as is i you know maybe people like understand how to do it but i love I, like i said before i do love how much the dates are simple but they don't feel budget like callie and i always comment on how budget bachelorette feels compared to the bachelor yeah this doesn't feel cheap it just feels like simple they're definitely not expensive <laughs> no the budget is low but at one point, Joan, when they sit down, Joan gets the one on one date from the group date. When they sit down to dinner, she goes, who gets to eat place dinner in a place like this? And I looked around. I was like, oh, a place full of weird trinkets and antiques. Literally yeah. every person who ever goes on a date on this show gets to eat back dinner to the in a antique place store like on La Brea. I was glad to see it. it looked a little bit different. But but there is just because of the way the, the context of the show it, like I said, it feels straightforward versus low budget. Whereas, like, the charity season's like, okay, so they're making a big deal about going to Oceanside? Like, I don't think so. I mean, maybe they should just not travel anymore. Like, I don't know why they do have to travel. Are they going to travel on Golden Bachelor? I think only for the net, for the finale. Okay. Which I'd, I I'd be down to see it all. This has also given me, like, a new love for the mansion, which I normally yes. find disgusting. Yes, I love seeing them hanging out in the mansion. Like, just give us more of the women getting getting down together and the men when they're on The Bachelorette. Like, it's sort of what makes the show fun. It's not like because they're finding love in London. So uh, there's like so many lessons to be learned from this. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. On that note, let's talk about Bachelor in Paradise, where many lessons were learned this week. Namely, Kat is the Kathy of Paradise. What a, what a performance from Kat. She's a... She's a... Just, you know, I think I said last week, like, I'm fascinated by people who are that uptight. I'm fascinated about everything about Kat. Like, she will just, she will just fly blind and then have, like, one moment of sort of self-reflection. And the way she, like, <laughs> She just gets it off her person. <laughs> in a sentence. She, like, you know, when she's really worked up about Brayden, she's like, this is hard for me, too. I think. <laughs> like, she has no idea. <laughs> She doesn't seem real. I just called her the Kathy of Paradise. I actually don't mean that. She's like a total Kathy Teresa hybrid. She's both yeah. like mean to other people, but also completely self-obsessed. And what about and being like, well, my love story. Blah, 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 blah. But 
a question for you. Do you think she was like straight up just using Brayden, like waiting for someone else to come down? Like, do you think this was all a plan or she's just flying blind? Like, what do you think her MO is here? Uh, for me, in the cat and Brayden thing, the most important thing that like keeps coming back to me because like cats not my style of person, you know, I don't. It's she's definitely like, not mine. She's popular though. With amongst the other people. Yeah. Did you hear when like Kylie and Jess start to try to talk to her to do, Kylie's trying to tell her to just like tone it down a bit, yeah. tone the happiness right. down a bit. It was a great scene. And, yeah. And she's like, what's going on? And then she goes, okay, let's talk. And then she walks away and she goes, right now, right now. <laughs> if a friend ever said that to me a person ever spoke to me like that, the conversation would change. We would be having a different conversation once we made it over to the day bed. Like she's just so fucking intense, which I do find fascinating as a TV character. Yes. And I'm glad you said that because I was just going to say she combined so many different, um, like just like tropes of female characters. Like she's got the uptightness of Tracy Flick. She's got the like, snap to it of Regina George. She's got the self-absorption of Teresa. She's got the meanness of Kathy. She's got, she's just like a lot of stuff going on in Cat, and it turns into a pretty grating person, I, I have to assume. That's yeah. good for TV. But Kylie and Jess like really like her. They're like, yeah, she's like our best friend. I, and I think Kylie also seems like really well liked. So I'm like, so are you two like the axis of power on the beach? Like, what's going on? I I honestly didn't see that coming. I didn't even know they had a friendship. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's got a good friend that they talk a lot of shit about. Like that, <laughs> you know, that's just like we love her because we love her, and we're not sure why, but she's got <laughs> a lot going on. But like, she's also fun, and like Tracy Flick. It, that's such a great comparison, Juliet. Like, she does. Who I, I said about Will last week that, like, you kind of have to respect someone who has overcome that many, like, societal obstacles for, for, like, a man to become that emotional. I feel that about Kat. Like, you kind of have to, I, like, I always respect an angry woman, you know? I know mm -hmm. that my lack of anger is from societal oppression. And I really, <laughs> like, respect when women, like, I always really liked that Hannah Brown was really mad all the time. It's just very funny. I love and that, Jody. It's a great point. <laughs> I do. Not about you. I, I don't want you to be oppressed, but I think that's a really good point about It's okay. Uh, female, I'm like pretty far along rage. in life. I'm probably not going to get a lot angrier, but like <laughs> I, I like angry women. And and I do like that in Cat. And the thing, I think that like Braden's feelings of being hurt are valid. His inability to blame any of those feelings on himself is weaponized ignorance. Like I, I agree with Kat and I saw it in their relationship that she was not as into him as he was into her. I think she was pretty clear about that. Like, and sometimes, you know, she says like, it's not my fault. He can't read body language. And I think that like that could come across as like, okay, so he was supposed to, but I think she was telling him, I think she was showing him. We see he likes her. He wasn't going to give his rose to anyone else. And like, so sometimes I'm like, are we living in reality when everyone's like, she's in paradise because of him? No, she's in paradise because she was cast on paradise and played the structure of paradise, which is like, you get a rose or you don't. And she, I, I don't think this was completely plotted. I think she liked Brayden just fine and was surprised by liking him just fine. But this kiss that everyone keeps talking about. She kissed him when she got his rose and that is significant of something. She literally recoiled at the end of it. Like <laughs> she walks away and she says, I'm covered in sweat. And like Brayden was like, oh yeah, she, I'm, we're the exact same amount of into each other. I've covered You're her with adult. my mask. <laughs> You're an adult. Like, look, like use your context clues. And it's fine if he, he or Will or anyone is someone who falls hard and fast, but he wants her to, he's kind of keeps saying like, I'm just not someone who can go cold. She's not someone who can, she, I just don't think she overplayed her hand. I didn't see her acting so into him. No, I think. I guess I was a little surprised just because the promos for the season showed them getting like hit by the wave while making out on the beach like so much. And I have to assume uh -huh. that's over and like we won't be seeing that. I think that was with Brayden. <laughs> I don't know. I, that that visual isn't ringing any bells. So 
Did, but do you know what I'm talking about? They showed it at the, after the final rose. It was in, like, a lot of the previews. Cats making out with someone lying on the beach, and they get hit by a wave, and they get, like, knocked over. So I don't know if that's Tanner or Brayden. I really thought it was Brayden. So I feel like maybe it got a little hot and heavy quickly, but we didn't see it. But also, like, again, like, it's paradise. You just got to, like, it, it, things burn hot and fast, and you got to see if it works for you or not. So I don't know. I guess I understand some of what Brayden's saying, but also, like, Brayden just, like, to me, even though the guys have, like, come around on him and they don't no longer hate him, I still find him quite annoying and also would choose Tanner over Brayden every day of the week. So, with that in mind, I feel you, Kat. <laughs> yeah, and, like, I'm also, like, I do, they're both extremely wrong in the situation is kind of the thing. No one's right, I think. Well, here's the worst thing Kat did. Okay. Uh, Jess is allegedly her best friend. And Tanner was number one on Jess's list. And Kat just goes on the date, and as far as we know, doesn't check with Jess or Brayden. But I, I think the Jess one is worse. They have a longer-standing relationship. They're like, we heard a lot about bro code. What about girl code? I mean, it's definitely bro code worse. on this show or a different show that I'm watching? Oh, bro code was on Southern Charm. My bad. I can't, I'm so in on this season of Southern Charm. It's like, it's always like uh, playing in the back of my mind. I, I can't forget it. But anyway... What about Girl Code Cat? What about checking in with Jess, being like, hey, I really want to go on this date. I know you were into him. I know it sucks, but like, I'm going to do it. Like, even not apologizing or don't even ask for permission, but just like acknowledge that you're being a shitty friend. Like, you could do that. Yeah. Cat follows Cat Code, which is where Cat thinks about Cat <laughs> constantly. And I don't respect that about her. It's like, I know if I, I would be, I would not be able to tolerate Kat. There is, there Me is neither. something about like hard pass, her extreme, just like ignorance to how she comes across that I sort of enjoy watching at this point. I'm in probably, this is, it's like this cat episode was good for me. I'm not going to want to, I'm not, I don't want her to be the main character of, paradise or it, or yeah. it will ultimately be too grating. But, you know, you bring up Jess and Jess's performance in this episode of paradise was really, it's interesting. I, I just noticed this time that like, it seems like every single one of these men has come in interested in Jess and it is not lost on me that she is extremely young. And I find something about that Gross. But then, <laughs> not on Jess's part, on the men's part of being like, you know who I'm interested in? The very youngest The nubile person young there. woman. Yes. The, yeah. the one and who I watched, like, and now she's 24, but like she was 22 or 23 on her season. So young. And all these 30 year old men are just coming in, like, let me get my paws on Jess. And then, but I, I've really found it remarkable how little Riz Jess has when she sits down with these men. I mean, she, it was like Sorry, quite pause. torturous. I just, I know that Riz is like a TikTokism that like young people say. I, what does it mean? I think that it's short for charisma. Oh, got it. Okay, thanks. And so like, but in general, it just means like having, <laughs> having like game. Got it. Like talk the game thing. mostly. Yeah. yeah. Got it. And okay. Jess... Jess does not have a lick of it unless like she got in front of Tanner and she was like, who cares? I'm not actually into this, but like, well, okay. I'll tell you what is the definition of not Riz what? is Jess at, with every man that she talks to saying, I put on this one piece because I'm, I'm feeling today. bloated. <laughs> I was like, Jess, what are you? And she clearly is self-conscious about wearing the one piece. Let's be clear. The because legs Kat of the made one her feel piece, bad about it. Damn it, Cat. Cat. Because Cat was like, don't wear a one piece. It's not hot or something like that. But I thought she, I thought Cat was saying she talked her into wearing it because her boobs looked really good in it. But oh. like this one piece that Jess seems to feel self conscious about wearing as though it is like matronly and like she looks like a grandmother, the legs of it are like up to her armpits. It's like, lingerie. This is not like it's, no one piece you've ever yeah. seen. At first look, if you only saw it from like chest up, you'd be like, oh, that's that somersault bathing suit I see all yeah. over Instagram. Yeah. And then you get the, a wider shot and you're like, oh, never mind. This is like the rated X version of a oh, somersault that's her bathing whole suit. Butt, and it looks yeah. amazing. I was like, Jess, these guys are not worried about your one piece. Yeah. If you want to share that you're bloated, that's fine. That is immediate <laughs> intimacy, but I don't think it's necessary. I know. When she kept saying that, it was so cringe. But I guess she's just nervous. The thing about Jess is she is very young, but in a way that makes her pretty, like, real. Like, I, you know, 
we see her being nervous and we see her like being a little unsure of herself in a pretty sweet way because the guys are so into her. <laughs> yeah, I like that ultimately like she doesn't she doesn't have any riz, you know, like yeah. I, I, I like that like she's like she's so beautiful and sweet and like they all want her and they get in front of her and she's just like, well, what's up? <laughs> yeah, and then they go for bitchy cat instead who's like just fascinating. You know, I mean, it's so predictable. It's the worst, right? Like, poor Jess. I hope she finds love. Blake remains so subdued. I'm like, is he high? I, I don't know what's going on there. So I, I don't think that's a match made in heaven. I think, but hopefully they, they both find happiness. <laughs> not I with don't each know. other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not with each other. We had some other arrive. We talked about Tanner. Other big male arrival this week was Tyler Norris. I like how the Tylers of this show or of like this franchise are all like full name, like Tyler Norris yeah. to indicate who you're talking about because there are so many Tylers. My main question for you, Jody, everyone was so excited when he came down to the beach, men included. Is Tyler Norris hot? Like what's going on? Everyone acts like he's like some Adonis. I know, I know that he is objectively hot. Like he's... He got swole, that's for sure. He's very swole. He was he was genuinely worried about busting the own sleeves, his own <laughs> sleeves of his shirt. It was like he was he was stunned by the size of his biceps. He is always smiling. And he so what's weird is yeah, I would say he's cute. Like I think people are confused because on Rachel's season, he was really cute and now he's swole, so he's He was hot. like puppy dog cute on Rachel's season. Yeah, like like young Zach Efron, cute. Right. Like and Disney now he's like channel Zach yeah. Efron. And now he's like when Zach Efron got swole, and it's like, oh, is he hot now? And that might mean that Tyler has a couple more chapters coming for him in the Zach Efron transition book. But like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's I don't know. The way that it's so funny when new guys come in. It, to watch the other guys spiral about how hot they are. Because like Tanner, Tanner, I wouldn't, obviously he's hot, but Tanner, I would say is like handsome. He's really, and it was funny that you mentioned Southern Charm because when he walked on, I was like, and he's ha he's always been hot, but I, I do feel he's had like a, even more of a glow up. Like he's like an amalgamation of all the Southern Charm men, but then made much hotter. Something about him looks like someone on Southern Charm. I think he just has a kind of like a general hot guy look. I think I think Tanner's really handsome. Definitely into him. I think he's the kind of attainable hot. He kind of, to your point about the Southern Charm guys, none of them are like so stunning the way that like a Tyler Cameron is or Avon is. Like Avon, yeah, as we discussed last week, is like objectively actually is an Adonis. But there's something about a tall guy with a symmetrical face and like dark hair and like that you're just, that, that's like, in a in a world could be attainable, but actually isn't because every one agrees they're really handsome. And so like the consensus then moves them out of the attainable stratosphere. And so that's Tanner to me. And also like Austin and Shep and Craig. Yeah. It's like what it is is they can attain you, or they can they <laughs> rather I'll speak for myself, they can attain me. It's like I want to think that if confronted with a six five jackass, that like I wouldn't fold, but I would. Fold like a napkin. I know I would. You know where I stand on the Southern Charm men, Jody. So it's, it's, you know, I, it's you my know curse. I don't like to talk about it. It'll ruin our newly formed <laughs> friendship. <laughs> our J Crew Factory bond. <laughs> I think Tyler seems like a nice guy. I like how that Tyler and Avon are friends. It seemed like they had no connection, even though apparently they're roommates. Like, Avon was really excited he came down, but then we didn't see them talk to each other really at all. And I'm like, for roommates, like, shouldn't you be like closer? I was confused by that. I want to know what, like, psychodrama is happening with Rachel and all of her ex-boyfriends. That It was so crazy to me that we did not circle back on that she was genuinely open to huh. getting back together with Tyler, her number four pick, who she's like, we just always had a flirty relationship. And when they sit down, it's like, yeah, they've already skipped so many steps. They're immediately like very flirty. She's like, I'm being so chill, Tyler. Can you believe it? I'm so chill. Like they have like inside jokes because she's not chill. And <laughs> I was like, what a love story this would be if they could just I was rooting for and, it. And then, and then nothing. He picks Mercedes. I was like, how is Rachel feeling? Didn't see that come in. I know. She just keeps getting... I feel like reject, Rachel just does keep getting rejected. She'll find She'll find the right person. She's kind of like a sneaky Hannah Brown where you're just like... She just kind of gets... Like, just knocked down, knocked down, and then she'll find the one. 
I mean, she did she did quite spin out on her season into like extreme self-consciousness. So I just hope that doesn't happen here. But she does have, you know, the loving support of double denim Ken. <laughs> so that could help. She has a she has a solid plan B. No double denim Ken. Tyler and Mercedes fell fast. I'm just like, is this real? Like what like they must have been DMing before the show. There's no way those two people never talk to each other to like then have this outcome of like being so into each other. So I'm assuming there's some off show context we didn't get. Yeah, I think they had that fire emoji build up like Kylie and Avon because when like two people like Tyler and Mercedes say that they were each other's number ones, I was like, who is Mercedes? You know, like when we started, started this season, I was like, I've never seen this gorgeous person in my I life. Know, like, I know, she got I no could, screen time. <laughs> and she's Tyler's number one. Like, yeah, they're definitely, so much of this build up happens on getting into the Bachelor Nation cycle looking at each other's photos, which is interesting, you know, cause like that kind of is like online dating. Definitely. You yeah. Build someone up in your head from looking at their profile and then maybe like texting, you know, it's yeah. like you do some texting or some messaging or whatever. And it's like, boy, have I been fooled by a great texter, you know, but this seemed to be <laughs> like, like a good, a good match. And sometimes I, you know, I felt this way with Avon and Kylie who are so beautiful. And then, I mean, Mercedes and Tyler are also beautiful, but they're so sweet. Like they're so cute. And I was like, yeah, if I were that adorable and I found myself in a setting with someone that adorable, I guess that's all it would take. Especially if you've already been talking and you're like, great. Now we just are on vacation together and there's nothing to do, but to make out. Great. I really like Mercedes. Like she seems like a deeply nice person. I have no opinion. I still feel like I don't know her at all. I'm like, okay, really? cool. Yeah. I just, well, I, talk. you kind of, you kind of cracked the code for me last week. I think when you were like Mercedes is a caretaker and like, mm-hmm. it's clearly going to rip her apart to actually like tell Will. N- no, you're <laughs> once again, not the one. Poor Will. I like Will. The other storyline we haven't discussed because I, I, I'm disgusted by it is Sam not pooping. And you would think that the backlash to the storyline last year of Ashley and Jared, um, like if they had sex or not, and like then like the farting going on in their room, like nobody liked that. I do not need this with Sam. Like at, they devoted like a lot of minutes to it. This is the case for making B- Bachelor in Paradise even shorter. Let's make it an hour and a half. Let's get it down to an hour even. But like, I just hated this. I have no interest. And like, I, I, just I'm like, no, absolutely not. No, thank you. I was telling our producer, Jade, earlier, as I think you know, sometimes when I have to watch a lot of TV, I will watch it on 1.5 times speed. I do not do that with like The Bachelor, which I'm watching week to week, which I savor. But every time these scenes came up, I was like searching. It was like, and I don't have access to it on this platform. I was just searching for a 1.5 times speed because like I did not want to have to watch this. I I will say, I, you know, I think for anyone, it's relatable to, sure. to when you're traveling, yeah. like be kind of annoyed that your body isn't functioning like the way that it does at home. I, I, I thought touching down on it was fine, but I have a really hard time with the word P-O-O. There's almost any iteration of it I would prefer otherwise. I agree and with you. I totally agree, Jody. Like, I don't even know why. It's just worth it. I know. Over and over. Okay, it was very hilarious that this, like, extremely stone-faced doctor was like, you have until sunrise. (laughs) I was like, okay, Dr. Kelly, let's be a little more dramatic. I like, he was probably like, I'm a doctor. What am I doing here? (laughs) This is not what it should be. (laughs) They were like, tell tell her that she has until sunrise. He was like, that is not a medical term. (laughs) No, it's definitely not. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) oh, just the worst. How do you feel about the positioning of Wells, the bartender? I feel like he's getting a lot of, like, not a ton of time, but a lot of, like, one-on-one, like, people come to, like, fill him in. Like, I I have an anti-Wells disposition based on, like, almost nothing. I just don't really like him. Is it based on anything? What is it? I just don't think he's, like, earned this role. Do you feel that he's failed upward? Yeah, like, what does he bring (laughs) to the table? 
It seems like a lot, Juliet. They love having him on the beach. Kat was like, I guess. Kat, when Kat was mad at Brayden, she was like, don't go tell Wells that da 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 da. She's like, Wells is my friend. I I mean, you know, he's like a he's like a radio host. So I, I do feel like he's good. He was. At- he's, I guess he's still doing that. He's with my he has a podcast with Miley Cyrus's sister, I believe. I feel like he's good at talking. I, I there's something to be said for like having an adult in the room. And like that's what Hannah was last week. That's what Wells generally is, is sort of like a resting place. And I definitely found myself thinking after last week's, for me, success, thinking like there needs to be an event tonight. There needs Mm -hmm. to be a game. There needs to be something that is happening because I know that it's always like this, but I'm noticing it so much on this season. Like when they're all laying in their couples on those lounge chairs, which significantly points out that Will is all alone, which is very funny. I'm like, who would choose this? Who would choose to all lay in a group in couples on lounge chairs? And then there's one point where like Mercedes and Will are declaring their feelings for one another in front of everyone. There was just like so much group, group think during this episode. So much. I was like, they need something to split this up. The amount of just like lying around they do is like stunning. Like, they do, they it, it's like, but just in a weird way. I don't know. The the facilities they have to lie on, I feel like could be nicer and seem cleaner. Absolutely. I mean, those like, you know, outdoor proof day beds, just they just look like foam. They do not look comfortable, but they it's sure so do choose to lay and on so them. And so dirty, 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 Ugh. dirty. Gross. Ugh. Callie, Callie would not approve. <laughs> do you have anyone that you like, surprisingly, from Paradise? Anyone who's like popping out to you? Well, like I said, I like Mercedes. Like I mm. just, I, I do, I think that she seems nice. I've enjoyed Sean Double Denimkin's presence. <laughs> Man, what did he, he said something that cracked me up this episode. He's just, he's a, he's a good narrator. And like he said, you know, he's come around on, uh, on Brayden. Okay. What did you think about Brayden freestyling? What did you think about that final scene? I loved it. I was like, show us more people having fun. I was like, he's legitimately good. I was really impressed. And I he was seemed like, like he was having oh, fun. no. When this was starting, when they were Would like, you- Aaron, give me a beat. I was like, no, where's my 1.5 times speed button? And he was good. And then like- He was that, really good. It made me understand like why people are liking him and coming around to him. And he's fun. Like he's- yeah. He's a person of highs and lows, very obviously. You know, like he is a lot of fun. The highs and are then so he high. Like, the highs are so high and the lows are so low. Like, I mean, he's just, he and Will, man, just like deeply emotional. I, and there I know. are no women on the beach right now that are like that. Yeah, it's not going to work out for them. <laughs> maybe Rachel. I feel like Rachel was kind of like that on her season. Like she's very fun and flirty and stuff, I think. And then like she hits a breaking point and it's hard to get out of that deep, dark hole. Yeah, I I hope that Rachel finds love. I'm worried about her, but I'm rooting for her. And, um, you know, who knows what's to come. Jody, thank you so much for joining me to go over these shows. It's uh, always a delight. And for more of Jody, you can find her on the Ringer Reality TV podcast. Monday, we got more and final Love is Blind, the reunion and the weddings. So much to discuss. And also all the stuff that's been happening off show in terms of social media. Um, there's some lawsuits to discuss. A lot going on in the Love is Blind universe. Um, and then, of course, we'll be back next Thursday. Callie will be back next week. But Jody, we'll have you back. This is great having you on this podcast. Please have me back. I love it here. Thank you to our producer, Jade Whaley. And uh, talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> 